If you're growing garlic and you've got garlic scapes, I'm gonna show you how to use those garlic scapes to make these garlic knots. When you're growing your own garlic at home, the garlic's gonna start putting out a flower and that's what the scape is, is the starting point. We wanna remove these because if the garlic is putting energy into making a flower, which it naturally wants to do, that's taking energy away from the garlic bulb by snapping off the garlic scape before the flower forms, then we can make sure we're channeling all of that good energy into the bulbs and hopefully get bigger bulbs uh, in our harvest. So first I'm gonna start off with making some garlic butter. I'm gonna use my garlic press. All right, I'm just gonna do this in the microwave. So it's getting, it's getting there. But I do wanna get Kind of garlic in multiple ways. I've got the garlic cloves, I've got garlic scapes, and I've got some garlic chive. So in terms of the bread of the garlic knots, we've got just flour, water, yeast, and salt. Um, there is also a little bit of fat in this, and that's going to come from my uh, garlic butter that I just uh, did there. I want about a tablespoon or so of this. All right, I'm just going to put the butter in there. This water is slightly warm. Um, it's about 100 degrees. Having it a little bit warm helps with putting the butter in so the butter doesn't seize immediately being at a cold temperature and also will help kind of give the yeast a kickstart because it likes to be warm. A teaspoon and a bit. 283 grams of flour. This is all-purpose flour. And a teaspoon of salt. So I want to get my garlic scapes and my garlic chives ready. So the garlic chives, I wanted to incorporate them into this recipe. It's just a different, slightly different garlic flavor than you get from, you know, garlic cloves or, or the scapes. When working with the scapes, um, I typically try to remove the f or around where the flower is. I don't include that because it's actually pretty hard right here, especially right at that base. So sometimes I'll just, I'll just cut the top off like that. So I'm just gonna cut these up and get these prepped and then I'm gonna finally chop them up. And if you've got like a farmer's market nearby, definitely around kind of, you know, the mid to late spring time, you can probably find these because now they have a really kind of, it's like garlic and then like a fresh kind of grassy um, smell to them. So it's nice, it's definitely not as strong as garlic cloves. So that could be another thing. If you don't like really strong garlic cloves, garlic scapes are, you know, a good option that you can use to get that flavor without it being, um, you know, overpowering. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm gonna get my mixer over here. I'm just gonna start this up on low and I'm gonna just drizzle in my water, yeast, and butter mixture. Just nice and slow. I don't want to dump it in all at one time because that is a kind of like overload the flour. The dough is soft, stretchy, it's a bit sticky. I really just want a cohesive, a soft cohesive dough. So what I want to do is I do, I do want to give this a little bit of an, kind of a knead by hand. Yeah, that's pretty nice. All right, so I'm going to kind of going to flatten it out in a bit. Garlic scapes and my chives. Just try to mix it to get all of the green garlic scapes and chives just as evenly incorporated as, as possible. So you can see I've got my, my dough ball here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this to rise for a bit. This is gonna go probably for about an hour. I want it to be roughly doubled in size. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil just in the bottom of my bowl here, just so that the as the dough is rising, it doesn't stick to the bottom. And I'm gonna cover this, um, that's really important. So plastic wrap or kitchen towel and um, get it damp with warm water and, and put that over top. Of, so I'm gonna cover this and let this rise and then we're gonna come back and we'll do the shaping and then do the second rise and then they'll go in the oven. Oh, um, instead of using plastic wrap, this is 
beeswax cloth, like linen cloth, and um, it has beeswax kind of embedded in it, and it's a reusable covering. Basically, you um, kind of with the heat of your hands, you kind of press on it, and that helps it form, and it's really good at forming kind of a seal uh, around this. And so that's what I'll use, because they, um, I can use them over and over again, just wash them um, and let them dry. Um, but yeah, a really, really good alternative to using plastic wrap on things if you're, if you want to look into that. What's up? No, I love you too. Good boy. All right, we're back. Doe has been resting. I think it looks pretty good. That's what we want to see. It's definitely, it's definitely doubled in size. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it out onto a flowered counter here. I am using a bench scraper to cut the dough into 12 equal pieces. These equal pieces is the goal. All right, so the process here is to take each piece of dough and I'm gonna roll it out into I'm going to stretch it out into a 12 inch long rope. Try to keep it even, and then I'm going to attempt to fold it into a knot. So I'm going to just kind of fold it like that, and then I'm going to put one side over and tuck the other end under. And then here we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put each of the rolls onto each of my knots now onto a parchment lined baking sheet. So um, I'm going to rotate this, set that there so I can get on with the rest of these. So those are all set. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cover them with plastic and let them rest for about 20 minutes and I'm gonna preheat the oven. While I'm doing that, the oven's gonna to go to 500 while these are resting. And the whole point of, of like resting it now is because we were just, you know, it, it had been had been resting before, improving and rising, and we knocked a bunch of air out of it. So we want to kind of give the dough, and we worked with the dough to form it in the knot, so we want to give the dough a chance to relax um, and let it kind of puff back up a bit with the, you know, with the yeast working in the dough. So we'll let them sit. They should puff up a little bit. I'm not expecting them to like double in size or anything, but give them a bit of a rest, and then we'll get them cooked. So the garlic knots have been resting for about 20 minutes now, and you can see they're, they're looking nice. They've just about doubled in size, and they've puffed up. Um, this is exactly what, what we want them to look like, and so they're going to be ready to go into the oven now. The oven's set for 500. They're going to go in the oven for about five minutes, and that's going to be enough to set them. I'm going to take them out, and then I'm going to brush them with some of the garlic butter that I made earlier. Then they're going to go back in the oven. And that second time in the oven, they're going to go in for about, I don't know, I think probably about four minutes or so, four to five minutes. We're looking for them to be nice and golden brown. And then I'll take them out, hit them with the garlic butter one more time, and they should be done. So All right. So they've been, I just took them out of the oven. They were in there five minutes and they look, they look awesome in terms of size. They're puffing up just like we want. Obviously they don't have a nice golden color yet, but we're going to hit them with some butter and get them back in the oven for another few minutes. So this is the garlic butter that I had made earlier, some of which went in into the dough. So I'm just going to brush them all with that. Back in the oven. Right. I'm gonna set the timer for four minutes 
and I will check them. Alright, actually, they're still they're still a bit too pale. I'm gonna put them back in. Alrighty. So I lost count of how long I put them in for. <laughs> All right, so I put them in for four minutes the second time, and then they weren't brown enough, so I put them in for another two minutes, and they still weren't brown enough, so I put them in for another two minutes. So eight minutes total. I'm going to brush, I'm gonna brush them with some more of this garlic butter. Um, they smell so good. <laughs> Should I open one? <laughs> yeah, it's like a present. Yeah. These really should probably cool for longer, but I am, oh, they're very hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually cut one open just because it's so hot. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, what's that? So there we go. Oh, that looks nice. Crispy on the outside. Really, I do wanna let them cool completely because cutting into any roll or loaf of bread that you make straight out of the oven isn't good. It's going to cause the inside to kind of collapse in on itself, but I'm impatient that I wanted to see what it was like. So these will cool five or 10 minutes probably. And from there they're ready to eat. And you can, you can easily reheat these. Um, I would just wrap them in foil or put them on a tray and put some foil over them, put them in the oven at like, I don't know, like 350 so they warm up if you want them warmer. Look how good it is. I like the underside too. Okay. Pillowy soft inside and the outside has a nice crust, crunchy crust. You want the crust to have something to it and then be soft on the inside. And that's exactly what it is. Now the garlic, it tastes great. Um, you really do, you really do get a lot of garlic. And I don't know if you can see, if I kind of pull this apart, like there's definitely garlic in here. So you can see all the scapes and it's nice. The scapes stay green. So you kind of, you get that green color in there and the flavor stays. Sometimes things you use like fresh ingredients, you put them in the oven uh, to bake and the flavor just like disappears in the baking. These, you get the garlic all the way through and there's a little hint of salt from in the dough and that tastes really good. It's really balanced. It's a nice, pleasant garlic flavor and it's a good looking roll and it eats just exactly how you want a roll to eat. They're perfect. So grow some garlic, get the garlic scapes and make a whole bunch of garlic nuts. Hi, it's Dan from the Frog Pond Veg Patch. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. That'll help us create new content to share with you. And while you're here, check out this next video I have lined up for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That's the best way to help us out on this channel.